Wildlife in Africa can seem like it's in a real frenzy. A relentless buzz is in the air at all times. Unceasing movement marked by the wild rhythms of nature. It may seem like a profound heartbeat provides life to the beings of the savanna, but this is not the case. One day in wild Zambia. The Luangwa is a major tributary of the Zambezi River. It runs through part of South Luangwa National Park. All along its 770 kilometer course are impressive concentrations of wildlife of all kinds. During the rainy season, almost all of this land is flooded. But right now, we're in the dry season. A magical glow radiates out from the horizon. There's nothing strange about dawn on the Luangwa River. The sunrise is exactly the same all over the world. The sun comes up over the horizon and its rays gently wash across the earth. It's time to wake up and stretch, to jump out of bed full of energy. No doubt, morning is the best time to get moving, to warm up your muscles before the day gets too hot. The cool air of dawn has everyone up and about. Nothing like a good morning workout. This is precisely the time of day when the lions decide to cross territory borders in search of their families, who have spent the night several kilometers away. This muscular and stocky leader is out for a good walk, taking note of all the places where he might find something to eat. Now is not a good time to cross paths with him. His stomach growls as intensely as his throat. A clueless passerby may end up as breakfast.
Usually, many inhabitants of these plains are out looking for the first meal of the day. But it's not mealtime for the hippos. They haven't slept much, and they don't have much time to get back home. All night, they've been out of the water. The hours they keep are overwhelmingly nocturnal, and their hearty dinners end at daybreak with the rising of the sun. They aren't interested in having breakfast, preferring instead to bathe for hours on end. As the last of the hippos head to the river, the others are beginning to feel hungry. One of the places where high numbers of hungry animals gather at this time of day is an area where the African Kigeli is found. This tree is also known as the sausage tree. Its fruit is large, hard, and elongated in shape. The fruit's unique form has given the tree its popular name. The sausage tree's flowers give off the characteristic unpleasant scent that makes them so unappetizing to humans. But for many of the inhabitants of the Luangwa Valley, the blossoms on this tree are a delicious mouthful, charged with fragrances that are sweet and comforting. Vervet monkeys use part of the morning to look for treats among the tree branches. They inspect and explore the scent of each flower in search of the juiciest options. Their task requires such concentration that they lose all track of time. Since the monkeys are only interested in the nectar, the ground ends up littered with flowers.
Pukus and impalas are also taking advantage of the cool morning hours to move across the plains as they look for flowers and grass to graze on. In the shade of the sausage tree, the grass stays cool and refreshing for longer. Naturally, this place is frequented by small pugu herds, especially females. The male has his breakfast alone. It's all part of being a leader and keeping his rivals at bay. But this guy still seems to be enjoying his colorful breakfast to the fullest. There are two delicious reasons that sausage tree flowers are perfect for breakfast. The impalas are well aware of this and seek them out with relish. The first reason is that they are rich in nutrients and a great source of energy. And the second, which is no less important, is that they contain an incredible amount of water, allowing the animals to steer clear of the dangerous riverbank for several more hours. It's clear that the sausage tree is one of the best places to enjoy breakfast and even lunch. As long as one of its fruits doesn't fall on your head. Giraffes also take their time enjoying a leisurely breakfast. But since they feed on the tree's branches, they are almost always in the shade. Maybe that's why they are a slower animal, almost never in a hurry. Sometimes, though, it's good to be quick, especially when your life depends on getting to the right place at the right time. The morning hours are more complicated for the spotted hyena. Their stomachs give an insistent growl. A 
few juicy, energy-packed blossoms aren't enough for the spotted hyena. And in the early hours of the morning, they need a hearty breakfast. The spotted hyenas have had a long and eventful night, so they follow their noses in search of meat. They must lean heavily on olfactory signals, since the competition for the best breakfast is fierce. In a matter of minutes, the luckiest hyenas discover the remains of an unfortunate puku that has been dead just a few hours. This puku was almost certainly killed by a leopard. The spotted hyenas must gobble up their food quickly so as not to miss a bite. This explains their complete lack of manners. They don't want to share their snack with anyone. Spotted hyenas usually don't get their meat by their own means, but rather steal it from other hunters. And they have no idea when they'll find their next carcass. As such, they make the most of every gram of meat and bone, knowing that come tomorrow, they might be fasting. It's almost inevitable that a feast like this one attracts the vultures. Breakfast is served, and they want to make sure they have a seat at the table. In this part of Africa, the sun rises quickly and it's important to take advantage of the early hours before temperatures are raging. Not far from the spot where the hyenas and vultures are feasting, life carries on as usual.
Zebras are fastidious at mealtime. At this time of day, the grasses are still cool and wet with dew. They make the most of these perfect conditions. Using their large incisors, they clip the juiciest, most succulent blades of grass and store them in their round, striped bellies. Breakfast will last them all day. But for now, they'll have to swallow fast. They can lie down in the shade and digest the grass in peace later on as the harsh sun beats down. This hippopotamus is late to the party. He stayed up too late. But the hippo has mistimed his arrival. He's here just as the lions are having their breakfast. And his tardiness has cost him dearly. His huge 1,500 kilo frame has become a colossal lunch for the lion pride. The hippo meat is so abundant that the lions don't even bother to drive off their worst enemies, the spotted hyenas. There's plenty of food here for everyone. Although these servings are much too big for breakfast. They all spend so much time feeding that they don't realize how late it's gotten. The heat of the sun is oppressive now, and many of the animals decide it's time to go. With their bellies full and the sun beating down on the plains, the lions lose a little of their gravitas.
The pride seeks out the shade near a dry riverbed where things are a bit cooler. And they all flop down, belly up. Not even the king of the jungle can keep his composure, turning into a big, sleepy, pot-bellied house cat. It's nap time, and along the Luangwa River, a siesta is a must. A group of African wild dogs also takes refuge from the heat in the shade of the trees. Afternoon hours are a good time to relax. But it's best not to let their guard down, because even though their arch enemies, the lions and spotted hyenas, are sleeping soundly, danger is always lurking. Several adult members of this large family of African wild dogs stand guard over the youngest pups, alternately snoozing and keeping watch in a protective circle. But despite the heat, the pups can't stop playing. The pack of wild dogs is quite sociable and always seems to be in good spirits. The young pups have learned to play with each other exactly as the grown-ups do, nipping and licking one another and rolling around on the ground. The pups romp around until they crash, and the adults keep watch until the temperatures drop. Here, you must never let your guard down. Even the invincible almighty elephants are on high alert to protect their newborns from any possible threat. The baby elephants weigh in at 100 kilos and would make a tasty morsel for a powerful hunter.
The elephant's huge bodies provide sufficient shade for the little one, who is exhausted from the herd's long walkabouts. From up on a branch, a leopard watches the scene below, drowsy like the baby elephant. But he knows that attacking this group of pachyderms is not an option. The little elephant and the leopard still have time to dream while the heat rages on. In the afternoon hours, the rays of the sun are relentless. Even as the sun continues to beat down, the great river gives off a fresh coolness, attracting a full range of species who gather on the banks. Bee eaters build their nests in the cliffs, in tunnels carved out by the river current. In the rainy season, practically the entire surface area of the wooded savanna is flooded. But in the dry season, there is barely any water in the riverbed. Here, various species of bee eaters gather. The northern carmine bee eater, the white-fronted bee eater, and the little bee eater. The bee eaters take the opportunity to catch the countless insects that flit about near the water. Their dizzying flight brings crunchy rewards. As the sun creeps slowly toward the horizon, they fly about filling their craws. It's time to get moving. The day has been very hot, but the worst is over now and the sun is gradually loosening its grip. It's the perfect time to have a drink and socialize. Many of Luangwa's inhabitants are about to gather at the river. They come slowly but surely. Step by step, the animals congregate along the riverbank, their throats parched. Hundreds of African buffalo move about in a tight herd, like a single organism. Despite their strong bodies and pointed horns, the buffalo only feel safe when they can sense the close physical contact of the other members of the herd. They are all aware that drinking water is as necessary as it is dangerous.
Like the buffalo, the red-billed quelia approach the river in nervous flocks, taking turns to drink and taking flight at even the slightest sign of danger. The buffalo also take turns to gulp down the water as fast as they can. They know that danger is lurking in the water in the form of a Nile crocodile. Or behind them, in the form of a lion. As soon as they've quenched their thirst, they retire to the nearby pastures in formations that are almost military in nature. There, they relax as evening falls. This is a good moment for the larger animals. Elephants can afford to move at a slower pace as they drink and cool off. They take their time to cool down their enormous bodies, which have heated up throughout the day. But they keep their young safely tucked away in the center of the small herd. As they cool down and enjoy the water, the elephants can't resist the impulse to splash around and play with their brothers and sisters. Finally, the matriarch decides that's enough fun for now, and it's time to get moving again. Everyone obeys, falling in with military precision. At sunset, a golden glow is cast on the trees, the plains, and the river itself, the Luangwa. The oppressive, paralyzing heat releases its grip as the sun nears the horizon. The life cycle comes full circle. Hunger and a desire to meet up with the neighbors has a knock-on effect. shake off their post-nap grogginess and give in to desire and rivalry.
Alas and Pukus measure each other up in calculated skirmishes, in which the most skillful will prevail without spilling a single drop of blood. Prize is a receptive female, or in other words, passing one's genes along to the next generation. But this time of day is not only for love. It's also one of terror, of murky shadows, and the hunt. Meanwhile, the sun transforms into a gigantic golden disk, losing its intensity and heat. It fades into a watercolor as it leaves the savanna awash in warm hues. The African wild dogs are back at it. A pack that gets along well is more likely to work together and hunt successfully. After the usual greetings and a few games that build confidence within the group, it's time for the hunt. on the move. Wild dogs have two opposing sides, the love and companionship of family and the ruthlessness of the most bloodthirsty hunters. The African wild dogs almost never fail. Their pack is merciless. Their methods are systematic. The adults take turns ambushing and pursuing their prey, leaving no margin for error.
Every morning and every evening, the African wild dogs have to hunt to feed all their pups. The pukus and impalas know they are in the crosshairs, and that sooner or later, one of them will pay the price for living in one of the wildest spots on Earth. As the wild dogs begin to tuck into their dinner, the night has only just begun. Here, there is no rest. There are no sweet dreams. The shade and cool temperatures draw the hippos from the water. In spite of their fear, the antelopes get moving in search of fresh pastures. And the leopards begin their nighttime rounds. Thank you. 